Hey, what's up you guys, welcome in. So today I'll be showing you a mini ITX case that I found among some friends in Discord, and that is the OCV1 by ZS cases. Now, I think this case came out somewhat recently, like a few months ago, maybe. There isn't a whole lot of, if any, content at all on YouTube. Um, personally, I love doing mini ITX, small form factor, and open air cases. The aesthetics and the practicality of it really appeals to me. Uh, ultimately, aside from content, this case is going to be eventually used in my mom's office. I The goal is I'm trying to get her some things in her desktop setup where it doesn't take up a lot of space and this happens to be one of those very, very nice uh, candidates for a PC case. So in this video, I'll be showing you my build on the OCV1 and what you can do with it. So first off in the packaging, you will get all the OCV1 pieces, which you will have to assemble yourself before stacking on your PC components. They also give you a little hex screwdriver and some bags of screws. Spoiler, the hex screwdriver is not very good as I couldn't get it to fit and drive any of the screws. So if you have your own toolkit, that would be highly recommended. Here, I will go over what I think are the most important features of the OCV1, but if you want the full specs, that could be found on their website down in the description below. At the time of my purchase, the OCV1 is $104 US dollars, which in comparison with a couple other popular mini ITX open air examples, price would fall below something like the X-Proto or Motif Monument. Some other notes, the X-Proto has a couple other variations in the N and L form, which also differ in price and size based on what kind of cooling solution you want. And the Motif Monument is also constructed from steel, which does make it heavier and sturdier than the X-Proto and OCV1, which are both aluminum. Taking a look at the dimensions, the footprint for these three are all relatively close, with the Monument being a tad bit wider, but only slightly. Height-wise, the OCV1 is the tallest and it's because it was designed to hold up to a 360mm radiator either for an AIO or custom water cooling. Now, for context on these three examples, the Motif Monument is only built for air cooling, while the X-Proto has alternative configurations you can purchase to do water cooling. The last big factor is aesthetics. All three of these do not have the same look whatsoever, so with cooling solution in mind, aluminum versus steel, and unique looks, you'll have to decide for yourself which case here has the right balance for you. Okay, assembling the OCV1 case was intuitive, but to an extent. You can easily tell which parts go where and how they are aligned. However, I did have some trouble figuring out which screws go where and those were not very straightforward as during the time of filming this video, ZS Cases does not have a build guide for it. There were two particular types of screws that could be interchangeably used in certain parts of the case and it's not super obvious either, but I did eventually figure it out. The build quality is pretty good so far for the price. I didn't notice any cosmetic damages, scuffs, or panels and pieces that weren't flush when assembled. There also aren't any loose parts that would cause rattling, so it seems pretty solid. Now, just to clarify, this case is only for mini ITX or DTX builds. The OCV1 also has an inner chamber that opens up for managing and routing cables, such as the necessary PCIe riser cable, since the motherboard and graphics card are mounted on opposite sides. Then the two most unique features I find about the case is that it has flexibility to mount a standard sized or SFF power supply and the ability to mount up to a 360 millimeter radiator, which will give pretty insane cooling for any small form factor build on top of the fact that it's already open air. Then to top it off, the OCV1 also has a built-in handle so that it's easy to carry around. Another thing to pay attention to, aside from figuring out which screws to use as mentioned earlier in the video, when you slide your riser cable through the case, you have to slide in through the GPU panel cutout first and then follow through. You cannot start your riser cable on the motherboard side panel or within the inner chamber and try to push both ends through their respective sides of the case. Only one side of the riser cable is flat enough to fit through the cutouts. Otherwise, you will end up damaging the riser cable by force like I did. Luckily, it wasn't too badly damaged as I figured it out before I nearly destroyed an expensive PCIe 4.0 riser cable. Some further notes about mounting the graphics card. There are no limits for clearance and you can even fit a full-size triple fan GPU if you want. 
As for the riser cable, it's best to use one that has reverse ends so it's easy to secure into the case as well as how the cable needs to bend. I'll have links to the riser cable I used in this build down in the description below. Additionally, there's room to mount up to three 2.5 inch SSDs below an SFF power supply if you choose or one 2.5 inch SSD above it if you want to slide that power supply down a notch, giving you two SFF mounting options. Now for this particular air-cooled build, I'm reusing all the components that I had built in my Motif Monument a while back. It's got a 5800X, a 3060Ti, B550 motherboard from Aorus, and a Corsair SF600 watt power supply. The only changes happening is I'll be swapping out the Trident Z Neos for some Corsair Vengeance RAM and replacing the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim with Noctua's NH-L9A low profile cooler since the Dark Rock Slim is too blocky here making it look kind of awkward as the goal is to keep the build compact. Ideally, the NH-L9A is not the recommended cooler for something like the 5800X since it's rated for 61 watt TDP while the 5800X is spec for 105 watt TDP. So, the Dark Rock Slim is actually a better cooler for the CPU. According to Noctua's compatibility list, the L9A technically is okay for the 5800X, but you won't have room to overclock or may have to undervolt. I chose this cooler because it was very low profile and one of the air coolers I conveniently had on hand that visually fits the build. Keep in mind, the point of this video is not to test coolers or CPUs, but rather focus on the PC component placements on the open air case itself. So if you want to build in this case, then obviously there are better combinations of air coolers and CPUs to go with it, such as the 5600X would be a great pair with the NH-L9A, like the one I have here. Um, if you want to go with bigger CPUs, then obviously I recommend bigger air coolers if you don't mind the bulkiness up top, um, or just go with an all-in-one liquid cooler because technically this case can fit it, and I'll show you guys in an upcoming video as well. As for the GPU, I'm not too worried about the temperatures or the performance here. I mean, uh, what I have is a 3060 Ti. It's the MSI Ventus 2X. It's uh, got the stock shroud. You can even overclock it if you wanted to. It's an open air case and the fans are facing outwards with nothing in front of it. So, Lastly, when I finished building the system, plugging in any cables to the graphics card like HDMI or DisplayPort into the rear I.O., it was slightly difficult as it will force your cable to do a hard bend hitting the base plate of the OCV1. So, my personal feedback on this part would be that the mounting position for the GPU should be shifted at least half an inch or roughly 1.5 centimeters higher to more comfortably accommodate the cables. Anyways, to wrap up this video, I think the concept of this case is great, uh, not just because I personally enjoy building in mini ITX and open air chassis, but because the flexibility on the OCV1 allows different mounting solutions for different uh, size power supplies and also maximizing the cooling for small form factor builds. And it achieves that by design because it minimizes the footprint and building up the vertical real estate, even allowing you to stack a 360 millimeter radiator. Now, speaking of water cooling, I didn't do that in this video, but please stay tuned. I will be working on that. In fact, if you're watching this video, I'm already working on the water cooling portion of this case. So if you have any questions about my build here, please comment down below. Thumbs and subs if you enjoyed what you see. And as always, I will see you in the next one.